Okay, welcome to the 40th Java tutorial. In this tutorial, we're going to go over the concept of interfaces. Now, we're going to tie this in with the last video in which we talked about abstract classes and abstract methods. Now, you will remember I set up a mammal superclass, and then I have these three subclasses under it, whale, human, and dog. And I've set up an additional superclass called reptile, and you will remember when you mark a method as abstract, you also have to make the class as abstract. So reptile is a superclass, and the lizard class is the subclass. Now this is its own little hierarchy over here separate from the mammal class. And so the mammal and the reptile are separate superclasses with their own hierarchies. Now, what are interfaces? Okay, first let's assume now we want to make this dog class have some zombie characteristics. So we want a zombie dog. And uh, how are we going to do that though? Because mammals really aren't zombies. So we really don't want to put our methods in here and put zombie characteristics in our mammal superclass. That wouldn't be right. So we have to create another superclass of zombie. But wait a minute, Java doesn't have multiple inheritance. In other words, I can't extend two superclasses here. I couldn't go mammal and zombie. That's not going to work. You only get to inherit off one superclass. That's just the way it works. So how do we do that then? Ah, interfaces to the rescue. Okay, so if we go over here to default package and let's make a new Java interface and we're gonna call this zombie and we'll hit finish and we get all of this, we can get rid of all this stuff actually. Now you'll notice here that it's interface, it's marked as interface instead of class. So, uh, you know, we've seen these uh, public classes here before, now it's a interface. So that's how you have to mark it as such. And then we will create our method. So let's go ahead and do that. And we're going to say public void and we're going to give this, uh, and what something zombies do, they moan. So let's, let's give them that. And similar to abstract methods, they are just blank. So it's the same deal. They're basically blank. Same, same exact way we were doing our abstract methods in our abstract class. The only difference is we don't use the abstract keyword here. Now the reason is because interfaces are by default abstract. So you don't need to put that in your interface. They are always, they always have to be implemented. And I will show you that in a minute. And then let's come up with another thing zombies do. They lurch. How about that? Okay. So we got our two methods for our zombie interface. Now we want to go over to our dog subclass now and inherit those methods off the interface. So, and so we want to go over here and type implements zombie. There we go. And now it'll tell us the dog class is not abstract, so we must implement the methods, all the methods that are in here. Now, I will point out one thing that I did in the last video, and this also applies to um, abstract classes as well. If this was marked as abstract, you do not actually have to specify the methods in here. It is only the first non-abstract class that must implement the methods. So that's the point I'm trying to make there. And we want to go ahead and put these in here. And so let's go ahead and do that. And we will type in public void and what was one of them, lurch. And then we need the other. And you'll still see we need to get the other method in here. That's why we're getting the IntelliSense. So let's go ahead and do that. And we'll put in the moon method as well. And there the IntelliSense goes away. And now we've got the methods from our zombie interface. So we have our zombie dog. Now we could have created another class here called zombie dog, but I'm not gonna do that to save time. And then let's go ahead and put, um, let's make a zombie reptile as well. And then we of course have to go ahead and get those, uh, we'll just copy and paste these methods out of here. And we'll put these down here. And then of course the IntelliSense goes away. Now the first question you might have is what is the difference between an interface then and an abstract class? Well, there is a difference. First, we have to mark the methods in the abstract class as abstract. But you also notice that we can put in non-abstract methods. You cannot do that in a interface. All of the methods in an interface are by default abstract. So they must be blank. You can't put in regular methods. And I'll show you what happens when we try to do that. You get IntelliSense. So 
can't do that that's one of the rules so that's a difference right there and of course this is a hierarchy this is a superclass which has subclasses attached to it this is not a superclass it is not really in a hierarchy it's on its own and I'm going to show you a diagram of this in a minute so that's the big difference right there now you're probably still wondering why would we use interfaces and not just use everything in our uh, you know our abstract class and there is a reason and I want to show you that right now in this diagram and this should really hit home hopefully and so as you can see we have our superclass mammal over here with its subclasses dog human and whale and here's the superclass reptile and we have the subclass lizard and here's the interface and the methods that we implemented in the dog and the lizard now take a look at this the interface is by itself out here we can now put this in any subclass we want and that is the power of interfaces they're not attached to anything I like to think of them almost as free agents and so now we can implement these in any subclass we want and of course we can go against any inheritance hierarchy we choose and that's really really powerful when you start to think of that and uh, you know if we wanted to create another interface we, you know we could do a space interface you could do as many interfaces you want and you can implement multiple interfaces in your subclass and then you might ask well what's the power of that well there's also another benefit out of interfaces let's say that I was working on this subclass mammal over here and Tanya was working on the superclass reptile well she comes to me and goes by the way uh, I need to know how to build a zombie can you tell me how to do that and I say well there's an interface out here go take a look at the methods and then she will copy those same methods and put them in her lizard subclass and she'll be using the same naming convention that I will in the dog subclass so that's important because when anybody wants to call those objects they will know the name of the method because they're published in this interface and it's also similar to a protocol if we put 50 methods in there you are telling that person how to build a zombie all of the attributes that go with a zombie and then again we could add another interface here we could do a space interface and then make this a uh, you know a space dog zombie and a space lizard zombie and that is the tie-in to polymorphism we are now building flavors of whatever we want, right? We can make as many different flavors of dog as we want, and we can make as many different flavors as the lizard as we want with interfaces and multiple interfaces. And that is polymorphism at its greatest in Java. And of course, as I said before, we are not affecting the superclass mammal because we don't want to put zombie characteristics in our superclass reptile or superclass mammal because that would wreck the superclass. That's not what that superclass is about it has its own mission to have characteristics of a mammal so that is the power of interfaces now this video is just to explain the concept of interfaces we're not going to actually do any working code here I just wanted you guys to get familiar with the concept and in the upcoming videos we'll actually be doing coded examples of interfaces oh and one more thing I almost forgot interfaces are usually always associated with methods you can however put variables in there and those are considered final variables but I will do another video on that because interfaces are really used with methods that's really the preferred way to use interface but you can actually use final variables and there are some scenarios where you want to use that and I will get to that in a future video so I hope this helped and please let me know if it did guys thanks